Hello everybody and welcome back to another quick Dwarf Fortress tutorial. In this video we're going to be going through the Dwarven interface. And we're going to be using Olan as our example. Olan Flag Conjures. Flag Conjures. Flag Conjures. Olan Flag Conjures is going to be our kind of description dwarf for this video. So we're just going to be running through the UI and I'm going to be talking about what everything means, what it does, and what you can do to kind of use it as a storytelling method for your dwarves. So this here dwarf over here, as you can see, is, is 58 years old. Dwarves live to be 150 to 170 years old. Uh, th this is kind of a cut down version of later portions of the UI. We have they they are in fact healthy, and we know that for fact. They have no official position in the fortress. They're not in a squad. They have some unmet needs, which is important, and they have some skills, and they have recent thoughts. Now these are all very much cut down, condensed versions of later portions of this UI. If we jump over here to the items screen, we can see their inventory. It says all of their clothing that they're currently wearing. This will also list any jewelry or armor that they're wearing. And now this is a very important piece of UI, especially as you get into mid and late game because you'll start to see dwarves and you'll see their clothes getting old and worn. It's going to give you an immediate instructions as to what needs to be worked on and what they need to be work and what they need to be improving. It's a very important thing especially for mid slash late game. Now the next thing here is health. Of course we can't see anything in this UI right now because this is a brand new fortress but they, you do get critters descriptions at the end of health which is very important for things that aren't dwarves especially. Uh, like, just as an example, we could get this for a goose and it could be kind of fun. But uh, normally this is where wounds would pop up. Uh, once you have a hospital setup, which I do have a video on, uh, wounds and treatment and treatment history will all pop up. It'll explain what kind of surgeries they've had, what the procedure was, like say they had a lot of infected skin. It'll say that the dwarves removed the infected skin and stitched up the wound. Uh, it'll say that a, a bandage was applied, things like that. You'll, so you'll get some really fun details there, especially when it comes to like the description of the actual uh, medical procedures themselves that were done. The medical system in Dwarf Fortress is actually like weirdly complicated. Even though the player doesn't actually do anything aside from building the hospital and setting up everything, uh, the actual descriptions of what was done surgery-wise is very in-depth and quite fun to read. Um, then over here we have a description of the dwarf. They are agile, but susceptible to, to disease. So the agile thing is uh, this part of their combat abilities. So this can actually change as they get stronger. And uh, as for the description of the dwarf, it can change if they get injuries. Say this dwarf gets a scar or a big cut or they lose a limb or teeth. It'll be noted down in the description. So his very long beard is arranged in double braids. His very long uh, sideburns are braided. His very long hair is, uh, his very long mustache, sorry, is arranged in double braids, and his hair is clean shaven. His, he has slightly sunken bronze eyes that are very round, and he has a scratchy voice, just like me right now, because I just woke up. His aver he is average in size, and his ears are tall, and his hair is chocolate, and his skin is pale brown. Now, a fun bunch of interesting little factoids here. Dwarf Fortress has basic genetics, meaning when a faction starts at the beginning of world gen, they have their looks. Um, and then dwarves will take the vi like the visual look of their parents as the generations move forward. So if you are playing as a very isolated faction and you start off and say you're off in the middle of nowhere and there isn't a lot of other dwarves around you, they'll all look very similar visually. They'll all have very similar skin tones, similar beard styles, similar hairstyles, and they're, they will be, it'll be a very obviously a monoculture of dwarves. If you settle somewhere that where there's a lot of other factions and let's say they get along or even if they don't get along, uh, you'll have a much wider variety of, um, looks and uh, styles and skin tones of your dwarves. Just kind of a fun little storytelling element that I think is worth noting. Maybe you have a very monoculture faction or a very macroculture faction. I, it's, it's one of those things that I think makes Dwarf Fortress a very interesting game because you can be like, okay, where did you come from? Because you have one dwarf who's just like very pale amongst a, uh, a, a, a fortress full of darker skin tones. Uh, over here we have our skills. So this dwarf is a proficient mason, an adequate stone cutter, uh, an adequate stone carver, uh, a novice engraver, and a dabbling planter because we just started up at the farms over here. This says the rooms that they have access to. Uh, every dwarf would love to have a study, a quarters, a dining room, and a tomb, but the only thing they actually need is quarters. If you really, really, really want to spoil your dwarves and make them super happy, you could give them all individual studies, you could give them all individual dining rooms, but it's not necessary. If you want to get really granular with labors, you can do individual labors in this screen right here. And also, uh, it says what workshops they're specifically assigned to if you want to do specific workshop assignments. Um, same with locations. 
as well as uh, assignable work animals, uh, such as combat animals. Um, locations is something that you'll mostly see underneath nobles and uh, dwarves like your manager and your bookkeeper. Workshops, of course, is uh, the uh, assign workers to workshop option. So just like with this carpenter shop up here. Uh, so where, where did our dwarf go? Uh, there he is. Um, and so it's not something that I use super often. It's very rare that I will actually be like, all right, you dwarf, you're assigned to this workshop. I'll sometimes do that with like a, a legendary weaponsmith or something, but it's pretty rare that I, I, I worry about that too much, but I know lots of people do. Uh, and then down here, relations is a lot of fun as well, because this is a brand new fortress. Uh, we don't have a super wide variety of, uh, uh of, of relations. However, when you embark on a brand new fortress, um, your first starting seven dwarves are kind of snapped into thin air by the game to just make it work. Uh, but when you get more migrants, you'll actually see their family trees and where they came from. And you'll be able to look through and see like these wide families. And something that's really fun actually is being like, oh, you this this dwarf has 18 lovers and they're all from different factions. Like, what are you doing? Just going around like making uh, out with people and then like abandoning them for new fortresses strange uh, over here it says what civilizations are part of this is a really good way to spot vampires or were creatures because generally those will be enemies with a lot of factions and have been kicked out of a lot of places also it's real fun to look at where your guests are from so if you have an open tavern it's it's a lot of fun and in it's it's, it's a lot of fun and very enjoyable in my opinion to just like look through their different religions that they're part of this dwarf is part of the creed of sparkles they must be a fan of twilight as well as uh, they are a member of the frilly grove which is our site government that's this location the fact uh, for for this particular fortress and the decent chambers is well the name of the civilization that we are part of so that is our overseer so all of these dwarves are part of the same uh, site government and the same uh, civilization of course we are the fortress of wall even uh, so, you know, then there's military, of course, uh, this will say their assigned uniform, uh, the number of kills that they have and the squad that they are a part of, as well as their thoughts. So this one is also very important. This dwarf is, uh, feels fondness when talking with a friend, feels satisfied at work and feels euphoric due to inebriation. Very important little piece of UI because you also get your memories. Now, in Dwarf Fortress, uh, as they're going around your fortress and doing things, let's say they're walking into your tavern, they're walking through doors, they're sitting on chairs, they're talking to other dwarves, they will gain these memories. Now, memories have different tiers of importance, and certain dwarves will remember things. And if it goes into their permanent memories, if you've ever played Crusader Kings, Crusader Kings has kind of took this system almost from Dwarf Fortress in a way. I, I don't know if that's exactly where they got it from, but it's a, it's a very similar implementation. The way it works is major memories, so things that are a major event in that Dwarf's live, life, when the game decides that that's a major event, and that could be like, I ate a really nice piece of cheese, or my best friend died, or my cat died, and its body is still on the floor, or uh, let's say I made a really nice statue. Uh, those memories could go into their permanent memory bank, and that can change their personality, which is the next t tab. And the personality does affect the way the dwarf acts around other dwarves and can affect the way they function in the fortress. And you want to be very, well, maybe not very careful, but depending on the kind of story that you want to craft for your particular fortress, this is one of the most important portions of the dwarven UI is the thoughts and personality tabs. Now, once we're over in the personality tab with this particular dwarf, we can see that he has an amazing spatial sense and a very good intuition and willpower, but has poor empathy and lousy creativity. So this dwarf won't mind so much if they see bodies on the ground. They'll get over it much quicker than most other dwarves do to their poor empathy. Lousy creativity means that they will actually learn uh, crafting skills slower than other dwarves. Uh, an, amazing, an, an amazing spatial sense is like dodging. So this dwarf might actually be pretty good for the military. He uh, seeks out exciting and adventurous situations. Would love being in the military, actually. Uh, would probably be excited upon getting into a fight uh, with some big, scary enemy has little interest in joking around and tends to be tight with resources when working on projects okay so tends to be tight with resources when working on projects again that that is a uh, a knock against their crafting ability but a buff against their uh combat ability and doesn't say, has little interest in joking around probably wouldn't like listening to a bunch of poets talk about crappy poetry you know uh he does not often feel lustful okay so is less likely to have children noted uh is somewhat uncomfortable around those that appear unusual or live differently from himself isn't going to like a lot of visitors in the tavern, especially from other factions. That dwarf will get very, well, maybe not very annoyed, but is more likely to get into arguments. So this is definitely not a dwarf that you want to have as a tavern keeper, as an example. Or a dwarf that you want to have as a tavern keeper if you want to see bar fights. You know, 
because we're a fortress. Uh, he tends to be swayed by the emotions of others. Okay, so uh, others that are feeling impassioned about things, this dwarf is more likely to follow them. So, like, if, if other dwarves are arguing or start a fight, this dwarf's more, more likely to join in. Uh, is a friendly individual, sure, I'll believe that, um, and uh, has a tendency towards forming deep emotional bonds with others. So he's very likely to become really good friends with other dwarves, and but because not often lustful, I, I guess that means like this dwarf will potentially fall in love with other dwarves and like make really, really, really good friends, but is not going to have kids who get married. Um, he likes to he, he likes to keep things practical without delving too deeply into the abstract. So if we have a if we have a library, this dwarf is going to prefer to read historical works instead of fa fantastical works. Um, so this this dwarf is more likely to read technical manuals about pumping uh, water and liquids than this dwarf is to read te or enjoy rather. They'll, they'll read them, but they're more likely to enjoy technical manuals than they are to read to enjoy historic than they are to enjoy fantastical or like abstract manuals about gods or something. Um, and uh, he is grateful when others help him out and tries to return favors. So if somebody say rescues him, um, he'll be grateful uh, being rescued from uh, it being uh, having an injury and being say put in a hospital. Uh, so he would be grateful about that and would try to return the favor. Uh, and he is does not easily fall in love and rarely develops positive feelings. Once again, so th actually scrolling back up to the top where this dwarf uh, forms deep emotional bonds, this dwarf's going to have a lot of kindred spirits, which is like the one tier beneath lover, but not actually lovers, and it needs alcohol to get through the working day and likes working outdoors and only grumbles mildly at crappy weather. So this dwarf doesn't mind working outdoors and uh, only grumbles mildly at crappy weather. Something that you do need to note about dwarves is that if they do spend too much time underground, they can become cave adapted, and then when they go above ground again, they will immediately begin projectile vomiting but when you and it's, it's kind of like cave sickness right so if they spend too much time underground they forget what the sun looks like and then they begin to hate it and they begin to just puke when they see the sun but in order for this to happen they need to spend several years entirely underground so if the fort becomes like entombed by some great creature or an army or something and you have to seal the doors off uh, that is a long term sickness that can happen and if you keep an eye on this screen it'll say down at the bottom whether or not they can t tolerate being outdoors at the start they can always tolerate being outdoors and they grumble more at the weather the longer they spent indoors so in Initially, they don't mind being outdoors. You can actually run surface forts and do all that kind of thing. But as things get further on, uh, they will run into problems with being outdoors and dealing with the uh, the sky and the rain and all of the things that come alongside of being a dwarf outdoors. And rarely speaks when he's angry, and he often bites his nails when he's trying to remember something. Those are flavor text. Now, we have values, which is the next kind of interesting part. So this dwarf dreams of mastering a skill, which means that they're, they're going to want to do things like practice a physical skill. This dwarf would really like being in the military, is what I'm learning about this dwarf. Um, dreams of mastering a skill. These, this has several different options. It can be uh, dreams of mastering a skill. It can be uh, wants to create a masterwork. That's a dwarf you want to be on a craft uh, because they want to make uh, masterwork quality items. You can have a dwarf that dreams of ruling the world, which means that they, they want to be in a position of power, so maybe you, you, that, you, you want to put that dwarf as your manager or try and make that dwarf into a baron. Um, maybe they, it, it could say they, they dream of seeing the great, uh, gorgeous places in the world. Maybe that dwarf would be, want to be your messenger and be sent off to Helixes to ask for uh, um, migrant workers to come and work temporarily in your fortress. Um Maybe uh, th 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 there's a several different options for these that are varying levels of frequency that you'll see. And I do recommend uh, keeping an eye on your dwarf's values when assigning them to long-term tasks. Uh, like, as an example, uh, being in charge of something or a member of the military or that sort of thing. Ma major life-changing tasks, um, it's worth checking that because there's a lot of different variety. And uh, or dr uh, dreams of raising a family is the one is the other common one that I was thinking of, which is just like they want to get married and have kids. Really, um, personally sees merry making as a waste and does not respect the law. This dwarf doesn't care too much about uh mer about being in the in the tavern and singing and making merry and uh, doesn't respect the law. Wouldn't be a good candidate for uh, being the captain of the guard and will get 
extraordinarily pissed if this dwarf commits a crime in the future and has to go into the, into prison. So uh, when dwarves go to prison, they're uh, in the prison system. There are several different thoughts that they can get in their heads, and uh, one of them is super angry about being in prison. This dwarf would be super angry, and going to prison for this dwarf would be a net negative. Uh, then up top. Like others in his culture, he holds craftsmanship to be of the highest ideals and celebrates talented artisans and their masterworks. Uh, this basically just means that this dwarf came from a dwarven faction. Um, different factions' ideals uh, vary kind of wildly, and um, dwarves, elves, and humans all have their pretty standard ideals. So if you're curious about where a dwarf came from and you're like, hmm, you don't seem like a dwarf by reading their other thoughts, read this. Because if it doesn't read like a dwarven description, maybe they came from a goblin faction. And that's cool. I mean, dwarves get raised by goblins from time to time when they get kidnapped and have horrific childhoods. I, I feel bad for any dwarf who gets raised like that. Then we have preferences. Olan likes orthoclase, silver, pipe opal, gauntlets, catapult parts, and goats for their uh, eating habits. And elves for their grace and the sight of the busset embrace. And when possible, prefers to consume bat ray turnip wine, and giant kangaroo's milk. Quinoa flour, and he absolutely hates toads. So previously in the game, they would get specific happy thoughts uh, if they ate those specific ingredients. That's been smoothed out and in its need, but they do still get like a little boop extra happy thought if they eat those particular ingredients as part of a meal. Um, as far as the um, materials up top, those are things that they will prioritize for strange moods. So if they get possessed or if they go into a fey mood and they want to make an artifact, they will prioritize those particular materials. And it's also worth noting that uh, if for whatever reason uh, we had monitor lizard bone around, this dwarf might get happy thoughts being near him or alternatively would want to make their artifact out of them. If they like a particular animal, like in this case, this dwarf likes goats for their eating habits. If you have goats in your fortress and you make them available as a pet, this dwarf is immediately going to try and claim one of them as a pet because they really like goats for their eating habits. It's just worth noting. And lastly, we have needs. So this is also important. Is unfettered after being after spending time with people, uh, is unfocused after leading an unexciting life. This dwarf wants excitement, uh, is level-headed after drinking, well, that's good, and as, is distracted after being unable to acquire something. This dwarf wants to acquire things. We need to make clothing available for them. So Dwarf Fortress is a game that you can play at many different speeds. You can play it very fast and not worry about any of this stuff so much and kind of let certain dwarves fall to the bottom of the happiness scale, or you can play it really slowly and pay attention to every single dwarf and try your best to meet all of their needs. This is my video of how to kind of begin to gleam storytelling elements from your Dwarven description. I don't know if this is going to be useful to you guys. For me, all of these different little pieces of UI are very important, and I haven't seen a lot of people on Twitch, at the very least, while streaming, going through these. This is one of the most important storytelling elements, at least for the low level of Dwarf Fortress's storytelling capabilities. So... If you're interested in more stuff like this, where I just go through descriptions and explain like how I try and glean storytelling elements from individual dwarves, um, let me know. I These are hard to do. This is the only one that I can do easily, but uh, hopefully this is the beginning of more of these. If you enjoy these short tutorials, this one's a little bit long actually, 18 minutes, so geez, I don't even know if this can go in the short tutorial series. Uh, crap. <laughs> Anyway, if you enjoy these tutorials, uh, please uh, leave a comment down in the description and tell me that this one wasn't uh, short enough to go into the quick tutorial series and is too long. Thank you very much for watching this video, and I hope to see you in the next one. Crap. <laughs>